Today, household financial confidence is in the gutter. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. We've released the latest results from our household surveys to the end of October, and today we discuss the household financial confidence aspect of the series. And we see a negative wealth effect now building as home prices fall. And by way of background, these results are derived from our household surveys averaged across Australia. We have 52,000 households in our sample at any one time, and we include detailed questions covering various aspects of a household's financial footprint. The index measures how households are feeling about their financial health. To calculate the index, we ask questions which cover a number of different dimensions. We start by asking households how confident they are feeling about their job security, whether their real income has risen or fallen in the past year, their view on their costs of living over the same period, whether they have increased their loans and other outstanding debts, including credit cards, and whether they are saving more than last year. Finally, we ask about the overall change in net worth over the past 12 months, and by net worth, we mean assets less outstanding debts. And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program, where you can support our ability to continue to make great content. Here is the link. The index measures households' overall comfort levels with their finances across a number of key dimensions. Recent home price trends, lower returns on deposits and share market gyrations have combined to take the index lower, despite strong employment trends. The wealth effect is now working in reverse, with a potential impact on future consumption. The index returned a result of 88.1, down from 88.4 last month. This continues the decline seen since 2016 and is now approaching the lowest ratings from 2015. The convergence across the states continues as home price falls in New South Wales and Victoria take a toll, with the southern state showing a significant slide. Western Australia and Queensland appear to be tracking quite closely. Across the age bands, younger households are under the most pressure thanks to large mortgages or renting while those aged 50 to 60 years remain the most confident, thanks to lower net borrowings and more savings and investments. For those aged 40 to 50, recent falls in property prices swamp any benefit from stock market performance, and those holding property for owner occupation remain the most positive despite falls in paper values of their homes, but property investors are now registering significant concerns, flat or falling income growth from rentals, falling capital values, and concerns about the future of negative gearing and capital gains tax relief. More property investors have signalled an intention to seek to sell property as the switch from interest only to principal interest loans continues, and more than 41% of mortgage applicants were rejected, compared with 5% last year, as more rigorous underwriting standards bear down. In fact, those renting are in many cases now more confident than property investors. That's a significant turnaround. The great property investor decade is perhaps passing. Turning to the moving parts within the index, there was a small fall in those feeling more insecure about their job prospects, down 0.71% to 26.99%. There was a rise of 1.53% in those feeling more secure to 12.68%, and as a result, those saying that there was no change dropped a little, down 1.91% to 57.14%. We continue to see the spread of more precarious employment, including gig economy jobs, zero hours contracts, and growth in low paid ancillary healthcare jobs. We also saw a significant fall in employment in the finance, construction and real estate sectors as the property sector eases. Savings have been hit by recent stock market ructions, plus lower deposit rates on call accounts. And as a result, there was a 3.38% rise in those feeling less comfortable with their savings to 43.39%. 49 49.28% .28 said there was no change and more are now raiding their savings to sustain their expenditure. On debt, 
45.47% of households were more concerned about their debt holdings, up 3.48%, thanks to some higher interest rates, rejected loan applications, and falling property values eating into equity, so reducing loan-to-value ratios. That said, those seeing no change stood at 51.87%, so more than half of households do not see any significant change at the moment. Looking at household cash flow, income growth remains anemic in real terms. Just 3.69% said that they had real income growth in the past year, up 1.32%, partly thanks to recent wage awards. However, 53.71% said that their incomes had fallen over the same period, up 4.01%, and 41.33% said there was no change. Those in the public sector, and especially in Canberra, appear to be faring the best. On the cost side of the equation, recent oil price falls have yet to translate into the results, so households said that overwhelmingly their cost of living had risen in the past year at 83.66%. 4.88% said their cost had fallen, up 1.5%, and 11.33% said that there was no change. We still find households discussing power bills, fuel, healthcare costs and childcare expenses, but they also highlighted recent rises in some food staples and council charges. So finally, we can look at net worth, assets minus debts. Around 30% of households reported no change compared with a year ago, but 30.6% reported a net fall, up 5.27% and directly associated with the falls in property values and share values. 37.92% said that their net worth was higher. That was down 1.89% from last month. So the falls in values are now hitting home, and as a result, more households are experiencing a negative wealth effect. This may well be deadly to household consumption, which of course is the engine of growth from the RBA's perspective. All this goes to show that tracking employment growth as a leading indicator of the economy is not telling the whole story. Slow wages growth, falling home prices and rising costs are combining to drag wealth and household confidence lower. And there is no end in sight. Another reason why we think the RBA will not be lifting the cash rate any time soon. We'll update the index again next month. Finally, a quick reminder, our next live Q&A session is now scheduled for November the 20th at 8pm Sydney time. You can schedule a reminder by using the YouTube link and join in the live discussion or send a question in beforehand. If previous sessions are any guide, it should be a lively event. As always, if you like what you've seen here today, please share and like the post and add a comment or question. I read them all. And if you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when we release new posts, do subscribe now by hitting the subscribe bell. And if you have already subscribed, many thanks. I really appreciate your support and participation. I'm Martin North, the Principal and Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.